Welcome to 4 Collector Channel. Hello guys, welcome to 4K Channel. Today I'm sharing with you my latest acquisition, a few graded banknotes from around the world. So let's get started. First up, we have this beautiful banknote from Belgian Congo. This is a 50 franc note from 1949, pick number 16. And this particular one has a red overprint, emission 1949. There's an earlier variety without this overprint. On this particular banknote, we have a beautiful portrait of a local uh, Congolese woman with braided hair and wearing a necklace. Also, we have serial number on all four corners. And this particular banknote is Series L. Uh, this one was issued in four different series, Series I, J, K, and L. And also there is an earlier, uh, later version of this particular banknote that was issued three years later in 1952. And that one actually says Central Bank of Belgian Congo, Rwanda, and Urundi. And that banknote was only issued for six months from July to till December. And that is pick number 24. It is more rare than this particular banknote. So on the front of the banknote, we have writing in French language. We have two signatures. We have signature of the governor, which is Paul Marie Charles on the right, and then signature of the administrator, and this is Guy Feirich. So those two signatures. And in on this top center here, we have the, the flag of uh, Belgium Congo. Uh, it's, you know, blue and yellow with a Congolese star. And on either side, we have this sugarcane plantations. Really stunning banknote. And this particular banknote was actually printed by American Banknote Company in New York. Really, really beautiful design. The back is really cool too. On the back, we have a African leopard. And this is pretty common in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now on the back, we have writing in Dutch. And then also we have this overprint, the emission 1949. The portrait of Leopard is really, really cool. There's a lot of uh, Belgian Congo banknotes that are stunning. And I think, uh, you know, this design certainly is one of my favorites. Now let's move on to the next banknote. Also from Congo, but this is after independence. Now, a, a word about uh, Belgian Congo. I just uh, wanted to mention that before we move on, is the fact that um, Belgian colony uh, or Belgian Congo was a colony of Belgium in Central Africa from 1908 till 1960. And even before it was an official Belgian colony, Free State of Congo, Congo Free State, was established in 1885 uh, where King Leopold II unofficially and privately controlled this free state of Congo along with some other European leaders. And they were really ruthless. They uh, basically forced uh, locals to work for rubber plantations and they, will, they would ruthlessly kill thousands and thousands of locals or 
uh, mutilate them if they didn't reach a certain quota for that year or that month. Um, so King Leopold was known for his ruthless treatment of, uh, you know, locals in the free state of Congo. And eventually, Belgium officially took control of the colony in 1908 because there was so much, so much crime against uh, the locals. Anyways, uh, even though Belgium took over, you know, the locals did not really benefit. And it wasn't until after their independence that things would get better for a little while because, uh, you know, at first we had uh, Republic of Congo and uh, eventually Republic of Congo would become the Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo. So this banknote is after the independence from the Belgian rule. Uh, this banknote is a 1,000 franc and it's issued by the Central Bank of Congo and Rwanda and Urundi. And this is dated 1962. Um, on the left here, we have a portrait of a local Murillo region young man. And on the right here, over the watermark window, we have the overprint stating Monetary Council of Republic of Congo. And on the bottom here, we have a river scene with a boat, palm trees. Uh, there's a, there's an earlier version of this banknote with a yellow Congolese star and that is more pricier than this one and it doesn't have any overprint over the window. This one is pick number two. Still a really beautiful banknote. On the back of this banknote, we have a water buck antelope drinking water from a local lake. Uh, again, that same overprint is seen on the left. And just a beautiful banknote from Republic of Congo. This is a banknote from Korea. And at first glance, it looks like a lot of the other older Korean banknotes but once you flip it over, it actually has denomination 100 and the currency is yen. So this is a little strange. This is a Korean banknote with Japanese currency. So what's up with this banknote? So this banknote was issued when Korea was a colony of Imperial Japan. So Japan took over control of Korea uh, from 19 uh, 1910 till 1945. Uh, it was not until after the Japanese surrender in World War II that Korea would become independent of Japanese occupation. So this is basically a Japanese occupation banknote. It's issued by the Bank of Chosen. Uh, bank of Chosen was basically a central bank uh, of colonial Korea and it basically replaced the previous uh, Daiichi, Daiichi Bank and uh, so the Bank of uh, Chosen was operating even after World War II up until 1950 uh, when it was finally replaced by Bank of Korea. So that's why I really like this banknote is the fact that uh, this is a larger de denomination and uh, it's one of the more prettier notes issued during Japanese occupation. Uh, the later banknotes uh, became more crude and the design got really simplified uh, and the printing became much poorer because of uh, the monetary issues 
that the Jap Imperial Japanese were facing as uh, they got closer to World War II. So this one is issued in 1938. Um, the series of 1911, the pack of chosen banknotes are super rare and, you know, gorgeous. So on the front of this banknote, we have this beautiful multicolor pink and greenish and uh, grayish tones. And majority of these banknotes have the same portrait. Now, if you look up who this is, it's really hard to find out. Uh, most catalogs just refer to him as the bearded man. But this is uh, not just any bearded man. This is um, a famous political thinker, uh, Korean political thinker called, uh, his name was Kim Yoon-sik. Kim Yoon-sik. So his portrait is on majority of these bank of chosen banknotes. And uh, on the top here, right over here, this is uh, Polonia Japanese National Seal. So the, the leaves of Polonia and the flowers on top. So this is the basically the Japanese seal. And in the center here, we have a Rose of Sharon. It's one of, one of a uh, hibiscus flower in the center. So uh, this is, uh, you know, highly regarded in Korean culture. So really stunning note, we have the serial number up top here, series number here, writing in Korean and Japanese. And the back is equally as stunning, a lot of uh, yellow colors and pink color. Again, we have this hibiscus flower, the Rose of Sharon, and then this stylized design. Um, there's a um, later issue um, that does not have 100 yen on the back um, and it's not as colorful. So this, this banknote is, is a beauty. It has a watermark of uh, plum branches that you can see through this window and it also has some uh, writing alongside. So next one. This banknote, this is from Australia. And uh, this one is actually issued by the Reserve Bank. Now, if you have, uh, you can tell that because it says here, Governor Reserve Bank of Australia. Now, if, if you have an earlier version and it says uh, Governor uh, Commonwealth Bank, that is pick number 31. This particular one is pick number 35. If you have pick number 31, that's that's much more rare. So this banknote is issued by Commonwealth of Australia by the Reserve Bank, it's pick number 35, and it's five pounds. You know, this is uh, from that British time when they were using pounds instead of uh, Australian dollars. Um, this one has a portrait of uh, Sir John Franklin. He was a British Arctic explorer, and uh, he had happened to actually die on one of his expeditions, and his ship was not found until many years later, and uh, they basically got st stuck in some Arctic ice and that uh, basically froze to death. Um, on the left here, we have the seal of Australia. So on the bottom here, we have two signatures, signature of the governor, Coombs, and the secretary of treasury, Wilson. Really a beautiful design. And um, this was issued after the death of uh, King George VI. So that's why we don't have any kings or queens on this banknote. Instead, we have explorers. And uh, if I could show you the watermark, it has the watermark of uh, 
James Cook. So we have two explorers. We have uh, John Franklin who explored the, he basically mapped the northern coastline of Canada. So he was like an Arctic explorer. And James Cook, James Cook, you know, he was a, another British explorer. Both of them were British. And he mapped the east coast of Australia. So James Cook and uh, Sir John Franklin. The back is really, really cool. I really like the back design. We have cattle, we have a uh, bull and a cow, sheep and a ram. So you have cattle, fruits and grains. And in the center, we have uh, Aboriginal, which are the, basically the natives of Australia, Aboriginal um, artifacts. We have a shield and a boomerang. So really stunning, you know, back design. Let's move on. This will be my last back note to show you. Now, at first glance, this is nothing special. Looks like it's a graded, you know, 100 rupees note from India with, you know, Mahatma Gandhi. But if you look closely, the interesting thing is the fancy serial number. This is serial number one, which is pretty darn cool. Now, this is uh, not a rare banknote because this was issued in 2013. But, you know, finding a serial number one, um, that can definitely increase the premium on these notes. So the front design has uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, you have the Ashoka column with the lion capital. Um, so basically the seal of India and then you have the seal of the Reserve Bank of India down here now this one actually has the plate letter L some of the late, um, earlier ones don't have that plate letter also this one is list uh, you know PMG, when they slapped it, they called it PIC Unlisted. There's actually a PIC number, and uh, this particular one is PIC number, uh, I believe it's 106. There's an earlier version from nine, uh, 2005 to 2012 um, for this banknote, and the way you could tell that is it doesn't have this rupee sim symbol. So if you have the rupee symbol, this is a later issue. So the back of the note is pretty cool. We have the Himalayan peaks here, and that's the back design. And then, you know, the 100 rupees listed out in many different local Indian languages. So that's pretty darn cool. So this is a nice, um, Graded banknote, this is 64 EPQ, exceptional paper quality. Really like this serial number one. Okay guys, um, last but not least, uh, this is just for the fun, fun of it. Um, I don't know if you ever seen one of these. Uh, this this is actually a uh, United States fractional currency. You know, this this is a ten cent banknote. You know, ten cents is a pretty small denomination, and it's funny that we used to have banknotes for you know these lower denomination, less than a dollar. Uh, this was issued during the Civil War, and metal was in uh, quite a shortage. People started hoarding their coins. So since they couldn't issue enough coins to meet the demand, they started issuing these lower denomination banknotes uh, called the fractional currency. And um, this particular one is the fifth issue. Now this has a portrait of uh, William Meredith 
among other things, he was uh, Secretary of Treasury. And this particular banknote was issued in 1874 till 1876. So it's a really old banknote, really tiny old banknote. This comes in two varieties. You can have a green seal, which is an earlier issue, much more rare. Um, and and the red red seal of treasury, which this one is. And for the red seal of treasury, you have to look at the treasury seal itself and then look at the thickness of this key here. This is, there's a key here. And if it's a thin and long key, it's a different um, uh, catalog number uh, other than if it's a thicker and a shorter key. So this one is uh, uh, Freeburg number 1265 uh, with a thin long key. The other one with a thicker long, a thicker shorter key would be 1266. Anyways, uh, the funny thing about this, uh, or the interesting thing about this banknote is the fact that a lot of times his portrait, the Meredith portrait, was modified by artists. Uh, so this is this is not a a issued banknote. I mean, it's an issued banknote, but it has been modified. Basically, graffiti on on banknote. Someone has taken ink pen and artistically modified the portrait of William Meredith. Uh, in this particular attempt, uh, they, they've given him some fuzzy hair, you know, this huge uh, sideburns, and, uh, you know, he's, he's smoking a pipe upside down, and he looks kind of disheveled. It looks like he's got a little bit of redness around his nose, uh, obviously not doing too well. So really comical. Um, I've seen a lot of these portraits and some of them are just amazing looking. Um, hard to find these nowadays. Um, you know, obviously this is graffiti on, on banknotes and, you know, technically that should decrease the value of banknote. You know, you can actually see the ink burn through the back. And uh, if you use too much dark ink, you can actually you know, result in like holes in the paper. So this is kind of tricky to to draw on these banknotes, but uh, this one is a really cool, comical, creative modification. Um, I don't collect fractional currency, but uh, this is so cool that I really had to have it. Okay guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Every time when I present you any banknotes, I try to give you some history, tell you a little bit more about the design. Uh, not just show you a whole bunch of banknotes, but actually, you know, give you more information about them as well. Because uh, collecting banknotes is so much fun, uh, but it's also nice to know what you're exactly collecting. You're collecting a piece of history with a great artwork. Uh, so it's fun to explore all of that. Anyways, take it easy. Uh, keep collecting.